Hello, maestros. This episode, I'll be showing you how to speak the events from your calendar. This episode is brought to us by Zach and Kay. Thanks a lot, maestros, for the requests. All right, let's get started. When you're building this macro, you're going to run into a few problems. The first being, Keyboard Maestro doesn't provide you any actions that deal with your calendar. So you're going to have to use the interface of calendar. But you'll also find when you're trying to use, you're searching for this red bar, and then you command clicking all the events, you'll find that first, you will have limited amount of events to select. And when you paste it in, you'll only get the title and the date and not always the time even. So that will give you some problems and what as well. So there is a better way and that is Automator. So Automator is much like Keyboard Maestro. It's an application to maximize your workflow, but it doesn't have any groups or macros like this. It just has our action pane simply because we're working with our workflows or buttons one by one. You can see here, this is our library, our action list and you can find the ones that we're interested in in our calendar group here. In most situations, I wouldn't use Automator unless situations like this, where we don't have an action for Keyboard Maestro and Automator does, and building, in, building it in AppleScript would be too complicated and it's an infrequent workflow. We're only using it once a day. That's when I would use Automator. So let me show you how I built it. All right, so I'm gonna open up my first workflow here. All right, so you can think of Automator much like Keyboard Maestro, you're just dragging in, in our actions and then changing the options. All right, so the first one I did, it was I added the get specific calendar items and I add the specific calendar I want. And then I filter it out. I filter out the events that I want. And this first workflow deals with all repeating like multiple a day events. So I set that by date starting and make sure it's all date starting within the last month and date ending in the next month and not include the uh, any events that the ending date is in um, that is that is in the next day. And that's because all day events that go the end like this actually span over two days and then it will still get included even though so single day would get included in today's um, today's events even though it's not part of it because it ends at 12 a.m. it kind of spans over two days so that's why we need to have this third line here next we get all the events and then we want to pull the summary of each of these events. And the next step is to send this, send this to Keyboard Maestro. So all we're doing is putting in a little bit of code here and we're just telling the engine to make a new variable with the properties. So this is our temp variable and this is our value. The value is our, just our input, just our input from here. All right, so when we repeat that process, but this time we're gonna include our our single day events and our timed events. So let me open up our second workflow here. Same idea here, but we just have just a single event and I set our single filter and that is date starting is today. All right, so now that when, when we run all these, when you run these workflows, you're given, you're given, dun, 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 dun. All right, so you can see here, this gives us all the things that we want. Timed, status, date. So now that you have these two workflows and they pull, they pull the summary for you, the next step is to build the macro in Keyboard Maestro. All right, so the first thing I would do is, first thing it does is it resets my variables. So I have two variables here, the events and temp. So the events is the final list that, we're, that it's gonna speak. And then temp is our, our temp is the list that has been passed from Automator to Keyboard Maestro. All right, so we have one here is dealing with our single day events and then another one dealing with our multiple day events. Within our single day events, all we're doing is setting the line, setting D line and timeline because 
Right now, all I'm trying to do is pull the date and the description. So you can see over here in Automator, when I run this macro or this workflow, I'm looking in the events. I'm given the uh, I'm given this this block of text, and you can see that line four is the one that has that has our summary. So one, two, three, four. Line four has our title, and line seven, four, five, six, seven has our time. So we want to we want to parse out this information. So let's switch over back to here. So we're setting line four and line seven. So then we pull the events and we've set our variables already. Now we're going to activate our Apple script to, to pull out the information that we want. So the first one is we want to figure out how many times we want to repeat the pull. So we want to just first pull the loop number. So we're pulling out just this number here. So this is our first line and it's word three. So one, two, three. So we are pulling the temp into the temp variable into Apple script. And then we are pulling the number here. So we're setting our, actually you probably don't even need set R and just set or get the word three of paragraph one of A. And then you can save that to our loop. Now we take our loop and set it here. And now we're pulling our three variables, our temp variable, our D line, our, our date line and our timeline and then we are pulling each of the elements that we want and in my situation I was just pulling I'm just pulling the these these uh, the, the title and then this first the first the starting time and the starting time okay so this is my time here you see that I'm going from word two through word three, paragraph A, and I'm including, so I'm just pulling the hour, and then I'm pulling the minutes, and I'm including the colon here. Next is my M, which is my ma 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 for M. What is that? Oh, for AM and PM. So then I'm pulling the AM and PM here, um, and then next is to set the description, which is. Uh, line four, so our our D line description line, and that is word two. So word two, this is our second word to the end, to the last word. So it's word two through word negative one, and you set it to text so that it includes all of our spaces. And then we want to return. So we want to return the time, and then we want to return the description, and set that to temp one. Before I talk about the error, let me talk about the next few steps. So the next thing is we're going to set the event. So this is our final list. So we're going to take the final list, put a space, and then include what has just been pulled from our Apple script. Then we're going to set our calculation to add one to our new line. So our description line and our timeline, I just added eight, just in case there are all, just in case our events include dates, locations, and notes. So it just adds eight. But in this situation, we don't actually have eight lines. We just have um, we just have the, the, the distance between our this summary and this summary is one, two, three, four, five, six lines. So you need an on error action. So if it's on error, I can't pull the right number, or the right number and the right um, the right words from them paragraphs. What it's going to do is going to repeat the action. So if the variable contains error, it's simply going to subtract one from each of our variables and repeat the action. Repeat the action. So this is an until action. Repeat this action until our temp variable does not contain error, and instead contains the things that we want. All right. So that's pretty much it from there. And then we repeat the same things, pretty much exactly the same thing. We're clearing out our temp again. So we're having a fresh list. And then 
we are setting uh, four and seven, and then we're just activating our uh, other workflow. So this is activating our first workflow, workflow two, and this is activating our workflow one, doing exactly the same thing and adding to the list. And yet then it's just gonna speak the day. All right, before I run this macro, I'm gonna talk about one other condition that you need in order for this macro to work. And that is when you're working with multiple day events, they need to be set to all day events. Otherwise, they'll get filtered out when we're trying to filter out our single all day events as well. So to fix it, just keep things set as all day, or you can create a third automated workflow to filter out for this specific situation. All right, so let's go ahead and try out our macro. Today is July 7th, 2014. The time is 10.15 p.m. Here are your upcoming calendar events for the day. 12.25 a.m. timed event. 12 a.m. multiple day. Have a great day. So that's how you pull your calendar events for the day. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.